uvažak u Evropsku uniju je zapravo uskoađivanje s jednim specifičnim rezultatom. Naime, Evropsku unija ono u čem je ona posebno specifična, da ona pokušava pomiriti na prvi pogled da pomirimo, a mislim da je to na prvi pogled da će pomiriti. A to je kako da u jednoj zajednici 27 stava 28 ružava, mali budu javno pravni s velikima, a da snaga velikih ne bude umanjena. I zato čak i kada mislite da ste sve umni naučili, a nije da ste sve naučili, vidjet ćete da se ona ponovno nije. To pratiti nije jednostavno i to je jako teško iskomunicirati javnost. Javno želi ima jednostavna pitanja, javno želi precizne odgoje, javno želi komplicirane odgoje, javno želi pravna i politička pedavlja, javno želi koliko je želi tu su stilu u vedoj pođane sačine. Rubno ne učinu u jasno. I vi kada komunicijate ovaj počin problema s javnosti, vrlo rijetko ćete dobiti pitanja na koje možete jednostavno odgovoriti, a pokušaju. Dakle, vi zapravo imate izbor. Ili ćete odgovoriti jednostavno, ali će pritom ćete propustiti neke važne dimenzije i dati povoličan odgovor, tim ćete ići u hvaljati cilovito, ali tim ćete ubiti služatelja dosadom i pravno i tehničnom komunicišću. Ovog trenutka Evropska unija prolazi na zemlju, ja bih je nazvao evolutivni krizom, Dakle, svaki put jedno pravilo u ovom gradu je da svaka evropska kriza završava sa višem broga. Svaki put kad je evropska unija ušla u određenu kriznu situaciju, završila je sa rješenjima koje su zapravo je odačala. Ko je odačala od nas, a ko je država ekte, dakle je tijem trita i derija, također ima sistem metra. Tako je, to je druga karakteristika. Mi smo inače počeli istog dana kada je turista, ali mi smo naravno razvojeni bili nakon jednog godinog dana. Činjenica je da smo mi sad tako praktički još uvijek slivno, da turista ima vrlo malo dvije pogledne, vam dodatno potvrduje još jednu stvar. A to je individualizacija procesa. Dakle, naš proces je puno više individualiziran kroz mehanizam benchmarkinga, nego što su bili ranije kogovi prošljene. Krug 10 nije, oni su bili, nije dobro reći kolektivni, jer se vodi račun o specifičnosti svake države, ali imali su nekako, nikom zajednički nazivnik je bio puno izraženi nego što je kod nas u slučaju. Dakle, slučaj benchmarkinga znači da prošljenja od Hrvatske pa nadalje su maksimalno individualizirana i specificirana prema da oni su tako lijepa, skrojena po mjeri, ali te vrbe. To je druga. Treća karakteristika hrvatskog proživljenja, ali ona za jednu načinu rastoru tipa nije toliko bitna, je da smo mi, mi ulazimo najkasnije u kalendarskoj godini ikad, odnosno se ulazi prvog sjećnja, prvog januara se ulazi ili se ulazimo prvog maja su ulazila desetorica, mi ulazimo prvog sedmog. Dakle, niko nikad nije ušao tako kasno kao da ste godini, u političkom smislu to je irrelevantno, ali u fiskalnom, u financijskom smislu, proračunskom, to nam je to dodatno stručno, fiskalno komplicira izračun, ali je u političko jam potreb za potrebe javne komunikacije ne. Trgovi su teška, užasno teška zadača, u hrvatskim trgovima bi uključeno u različitim ulogama i različitim javnosti. Međutim, naše županije igre uključenu ulogu u iskoristovosti fondova. Vidite da je po danas oscilira stupak iskoristovosti fondova, ali imate dobrih recima posebno su dobrih veterana osječko-parenska i bukovarsko sredstvo. Kombinacija je jednog i drugog. 
da kada pregovarate, dakle postoje poglavlja koja su dovolj centralizirana, gdje postoje, odnosno gdje je dakle centralna vlast je odlučuta, postoje poglavlja gdje je važan dokaz. Međutim, mi smo nastavili od samog početka maksimalno transponirati iskustva i uključiti što veći broj ljudi iz županije, iz lokalne sredina u pregovarač imove, kako bi ljudi mogli dobiti dobiti uvijek u njih. Administrativni kapaciteti su uključi. Međutim, tu vas komisija vodi. Komisija treba se komisija najbolji učitelj. Komisija, kad vam u jednom mjeru, kada komisija da mjeru i kaže za administrativni kapaciteti, treba ne znam, u regionalnim, u regionalizmu, ima po pet ljudi. Oni vam to ne daju od ovoga, oni vam to daju temelje empirijskog iskustva od 60 godina, gdje znaju za državu takve veličine, takvog regionalna ustroja, u datom području, potrebno je takva administrativna struktura, da se dođe do tog rezultata, gotovo u matematičke i fizikalne pojave. Dakle, vam neće da broj veći nego što je potrebno, ili manje. I onda kad vas pita, nego u glavnom zgradu, a je vzpilja treba sedam ljudi, da, treba sedam ljudi. Nije komisiji cilj vama za goći život, niti razvecimo se da se. nice little buildings like this one here and uh, you cannot see from this point of view but there should be the European flag and the blue white flag of Bavaria in front of it. So this is the recognition and start action for non-respected these very different certain times. So you see this flexibility clause giving region with a higher level of pollution more possibilities was a good contribution of the Committee of the Region respecting the interests of different regions and cities. Or for instance, yesterday, yesterday we had what we call in Brussels the Day of Monuments. Uh, you read yesterday evening? Uh, well, that's really a pity because yesterday was the Day of Monuments, so you could have visited different monuments in Brussels. And we have a European directive which is on the way, protecting by a uh, cultural heritage scene all these monuments which are of European importance for European culture. So for instance in Germany this could be the Cathedral of Wittenberg where Martin Luther has put on his 95 thesis starting the Protestantism against the Catholic Church and marking the different split between Protestant and Catholics which was a part of European history. Or part of the Berlin Walls which still do exist could be protected by this directive. The European Commission has proposed that in order to work out what should be protected and what not, a commission of 12 members should be, should be established. The Committee of the Region again said it's a good idea, but you could make it better. Add a member number 13 for two reasons. First of all, in order to establish clear majorities, which you never can have with 12 members. And second element, this 13th member is coming from the region where the monument is sited. So this member can bring in the knowledge of its region saying and telling you is it worth to protect this monument or not. And this makes sense. So you see again, we are not doing a revolution with our proposals, but we made the legal act better. Second element, subsidiarity. Subsidiarity in fact is an expression which comes from church law and it means to bring decision down to the closest level to the citizens as possible, the closest to the base as possible. And if you look at the... No problem. Yes, please. Who is paying for this 
representations, for example, this Bavarian house. Uh, ah, so it's very good for Brussels, but uh, it's work for the region. So the Bavarian house is an affair of Bavaria. So it depends entirely on Bavaria if they want to have representation. So you in paying extra money for the bottle and then bring back the bottle to the bar. It was so easy as that, but that system disappeared. And Europe decided something so. Was it, was it fair from the point of view of, of subsidiarity? Probably Europe went too far because it was convenient for Germany at that moment. Probably not. The fact is that the Committee of the Regions wasn't there at the moment, <laughs> still. But uh, we, the, the point is that the, the Committee of the Regions tends to decide in every moment, tends to define in which level of competence should the different policies stop. So if we have transport, we prepare a, a specific notes on subsidiarity that are really complex mm -hmm. and really, really hard to read, uh, where uh, we decide, OK, the treaty says that the European Union arrives here. And then the member states should do that. And in the member state, every member state has a different, a different constitutional arrangement so there are uh, states that are very decentralized, the case of Spain and Belgium. And the, but the police, no. The police belongs to the country. So if you commit, uh, if you burn the natural park in France, you have a fine by the, you. You are prosecuted by French authorities. If you if you uh, camp illegally in Italy, you are prosecuted by Italian authorities. But the park will be cross border. And there are also several other. Uh, there are, there are, it's not the only case of cross-border uh, cooperation in the field of environment. Uh, we have Kast Bodva between Hungary and, uh, and uh, Slovakia, and we have uh, also uh, Guero Douro between Portugal and Spain. They, they work a lot in this. And many, for example, many, many of these authorities want to work together for uh, uh, disaster prevention, civil protection. For example, floods. You have the, the river, the other between Germany and, and Poland, and when, it, when you have flood, the Germans are very well prepared, but the Poles not. So, <laughs> and it's the same, it's the same river, so they have to be together, uh, and it's better to come uh, to to do joint services or coordination services. Probably not all the services, but the coordination is an easy So we have seen what it is, which is the limit. Okay told them, no, because your office is in Toulouse, and Toulouse is, uh, is not eligible. They say, well, the office is in Toulouse, but we, but we are going to spend the money in Algeria and in the part of Spain that is eligible. It is, okay, our, our, our office is in Toulouse, but don't, don't make us fall for this. And then, our dear president of the Committee of the Regions, we have had a problem, could you please, and then Alfonso, please make a letter to the Commission, and then we try to lobby politically uh, to help the, the, these groupings. Another part of my job consists in when a grouping is going to be created or whatever, I find other people that can, <coughs> they can, they can help each other. Or sometimes in, in political aspects of, for example, in, in, in every aspect of cooperation, for example, recently the European Commission was discussing about the strategy for the Atlantic. Then I called the, the, uh, the groupings that are in the Atlantic and they told me what they are doing and what can be done for example, in cross-border cooperation for coastal management or for uh, fisheries or for uh, small fisheries mainly, uh, these families that have a small boat and uh, the... Uh, uh, and uh, his report, the, the rapporteur uh, discussed about how he sees the, the enlargement from the, from the old enlargement country's perspective. Uh, in order to, to issue this document, he has several meetings here in Brussels with the European Commission with the DG enlargement and he asked precise questions how the enlargement process is going uh, but also he meets with the delegation the mission of the old enlargement countries here in Brussels but also we have like direct contact with the national authorities uh, of course in, in, in Serbia we work as you can imagine with, with what institution in Serbia that covers the national level it's the Conference of Tanya Municipalities. It's our privileged mm -hmm. partner. So we cooperate with them in different, uh, in the organization of different meetings. Uh, this document, as I said, you, you're familiar with Stanley Conference, no? Yes. Of course, it's the main one, it's mm -hmm. not the only one in Serbia. And uh, this document, it's, uh, it's very similar in structure with the documents issued by experts. 
that could draft a very valuable uh, uh, project in order to, to absorb uh, new funds. Because it's like a small municipality, they, they simply cannot afford to pay a consultant to drop in the plan and so on. And the second was the, the information flow. They, they don't have all the information uh, and uh, the information which it, uh, could be understood by the people at the subnational level, a level of municipality and so on. So the information to process the information and also the, the capacity, the expertise to, to write uh, plans. Uh, for instance, we have people here, I didn't enter into details, but there is an expert from the uh, GIZ, from the GTZ yeah. in Germany, and uh, they discussed a lot about their, uh, their experience in Serbia. It was a uh, person, uh, uh, Alexander Brunauer, you know, he's like a project leader for the municipal development in uh, Lower Dean, Bay, uh, and so on. Anyway, so he discussing his experience. And this year we have two students coming from Serbia, so we have invited them also to, to join them. Although we probably didn't come here to meet some other people from Serbia, but we yeah, could share just with you their experience talking at the, at the College of Europe. This is Okay. Hello, good morning. Uh, you prefer English? Or yes. French? I don't speak any Serb, I'm not saying it at So, uh, nice to meet you. Um, I myself was a student here 15 years ago, so um, I was very happy when I came back living in the area that I could get a job here because it was one of my best experiences in my over 10 years of studying. So it's really unbelievable and that's why I came back to the college and now I am able to be in contact with the students, see the evolution because it's changed quite a lot over the last 10, 15 years and also to be able to promote the college outside, um, working with new tools like Facebook, a new internet we launched this week, uh, how do we deal with alumni, students? The Polish government invited the College of Europe to come here to Poland to establish jointly the campus in this part of Europe. At that time, at the beginning of 90s, it was really very important to address the needs in the educational sector, but not only to prepare young people coming from all parts of Europe to work together in European law. European economics, we have politics, and we have uh, international relations and diplomacy. You also have the big, uh, the big leaflet there, where you have all this information with some more details about the processes, the departments, the evolution of the college, everything is in there. But as you can see, so here we have four different departments with then even some specializations, where you can combine law with economics, where you can combine like several uh, um, parts of the studies. And then in anatomy, we have a department um, interdisciplinary studies, where students with fully different backgrounds can study. For example, people with a history background, or journalists, or uh, linguists, they can study at the College of Europe as well. So it's like more of a mixture and introduction to, to everything that is European. And then that's the first term. And then in the second term, they can choose a specialization. Um, well, there are so many things to tell about the college. It's uh, also on a personal level, it's a, a very thorough experience because at the beginning of the year, everybody comes with certain ideas, certain judgments about culture, nationalities. And that's really here that involves when they have to work together. They get into a fight with somebody, and all of a sudden, then their their ideas change. And then by the end of the year, you get. Uh, students who have been through such an experience that they have completely changed but for the better. Uh, we noticed that to go into international companies or governments or uh, um, international organizations, being in the college for a year has given them the tools, also the negotiation skills, the experience to be able to deal with all after the Second World War, in 1949, for the first promotion, 
The idea was to, after the Second World War, find a place to bring students all together, the same place, and students from all of the all of the Europe. Um, but even if our office has only been established in 1996, the college had already started um, bidding for EU-funded projects and uh, going for some consultancy services. But they found that there was a need to go for a more rational way of doing this project and a more professional way. So we are now a team of 15 persons working at the development office. We are six project managers. Um, and we have a team also of project assistants working together with us, and then our well, director. Um, it's true that it is mainly because of or thanks to EU announcements that this uh, office has been created, because our main task is to, is to set up professional courses in EU affairs, and the first ones who always have to be trained in EU affairs are also professionals uh, from potential candidate countries or from candidate countries. Um, so, well, I already mentioned. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I have to say that I'm not really mm -hmm. objective, but um, I'm traveling quite often to Novi Sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Because I don't know. What's your other name? What's your other name? What's your other
Finish Jula ima neki najnoviji fazon, kružni tok. Pa čak mogu bih i ja to. Kružni tok. Kružni tok. Kružni tok. Kružni tok. Filmom sam obuhvatio sve, znaš. Sad ja pravim film i svi su mi to. A ja obavezno, znaš, ovaj kružni. To je moj fazon, ovaj džula uzeo od mene. Fotografija? Da. Ne, fotografija ne pravi samo vidim. Ajde, što je sada šešno da se i kamelni se. Možeš mene s konje molim. Samo, samo stani. Ti moliš konje. Konje, ja sam ne razvojim drugo. Ja, konje, to je konje. Pa se svi za sve ovo. Kometo, ono šta sam ti rekla. Imam dokaz. Ti si ja, ti si što je. Ah, 
through every yeah. every cell. Oh, yeah. And if something changes, it means uh, your nightmare starting with changing everything through the whole application. So imagine what could request for the Serbian administration. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's consider it as an incentive uh, to create new jobs in Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> Extra jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now it's through this, so, yeah. They are applied and electronic form or printed and sent via mail? It's, uh, it's, you have to send it by waiter, no? You have to send it by the expression, so CBC now you have uh, electronic format now as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you have to, to send it and then it's assessed by uh, an evaluation committee with, mm -hmm. uh, with two administrations and uh, EU delegation as well. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. of the housing quarters. On the left side you can see a new construction, but this is not for all time, it's only non-permanent, because that's uh, part of the school. The uh, original school is being reconstructed, and on the right side, behind the trees, you can see uh, big construction machinery like cranes and so, photograph or small filming. Uh, the next way. Here in front of us to the left is community center. It is the former NCO club. Now it's for the community. Straight ahead we have our...